Hello friends, happy Friday, how you doing? Today is actually an inaugural day of Fan Mail Friday over on our Hot News live stream, which you should totally check out at twitch.tv forward slash UFDisciple. We're gonna have our first edition of Fan Mail Friday because people actually sent us stuff. Woo! So if you wanna send stuff to the UFD tech team or to one of us personally, I know that Reese is looking for a new pair of a sock. He wants not a pair, he wants a sock. So if you could send that. One. Yes, uh, you can send us Fan Mail. We'll open it live on stream on Fridays, Fan Mail Friday, our PO box is 5697 Gainesville, Florida, 32627. So you can uh, send us Fan Mail in case you want to. We're very excited to do a live unboxing for Fan Mail Friday. Finally have a PO box, you can send us stuff in case you're interested. Um, please don't send us used man panties, not something we want. Panties. And don't send us anything that we cannot open on Twitch's platform because of violations of terms of service. There was some talk in chat about sending us things that would get us banned. So don't do that. But do listen to the news, because it's hot. You ready for the hot news? And the hottest news of all is that, okay, there's two parts to this. And number one, I'm just gonna basically say, ha ha, I told you so, which is AMD has confirmed that Zen 3 is still coming out this year. This was done in an interview with the CFO of AMD saying that Zen 3 is launching in late 2020, which removes credence from the rumors that were happening previously that Zen 3 was gonna be put on five nanometers and was delayed until Q1, I bet, Quibi on that one. I would download and pay for a month of Quibi. Now with this re-upping by AMD that Zen 3 is still coming out this year, I'll pay for six months of Quibi if Zen 3 happens to be on five nanometers. And I'm not talking about like a chip or a few chips are on five nanometers. I'm talking about they're delaying the lineup to switch the notes. I don't think that's happening. Not gonna go down. I'll have six months of Quibi if it does, okay? But that's not the big part of the news. The big part of the news is everybody's wondering when are the consoles coming? No, no, nobody cares about that. Everybody's wondering when the GPUs are coming because if Xbox has a 12 teraflop console and that's a mid-tier computer, then why don't we have mid-tier GPUs that are that fast? How do we do that? I don't know. Well, AMD CFO committing that big Navi coming out before the console. So that means we are pretty much I would say very likely looking at a September release date for Big Navi. Big Navi 21, looking to release September. It's exciting stuff. AMD saying that it is a Halo product for them. Halo being high altitude, low opening. It's an acronym. It's basically like a giant, or it could mean like a angel Halo type deal where it's like the crowning achievement of what they've done. Anyways, they're saying that enthusiasts love to buy the best and we are certainly working on giving them the best. Big Navi, better than NVIDIA's next-gen cards? Maybe. AMD does seem to be a little bit confident that they are going to shake up the market when it comes to 4K gaming. And if that happens to be mid-tier, I'm totally okay with that. I, they don't need to beat NVIDIA's you know, RTX 3080 Ti. If they can beat the 2080 Ti for half the price, well then my jimmies are all nice and nestled in their soft warm palms. RDNA 2, coming soon. Coming before consoles, PC Master Race, Kind of winning. Yet again, it's a Halo product. They think that they're gonna shake up the top end market. Some good news. And Zen 3 and RDNA 2 still planning on releasing before the end of the year. How do you get better than that? It's all good news from AMD. They are on track and they think they can do what they set out to do. Beautiful stuff. What's also beautiful stuff was the Unreal Engine 5 demo that was shown alongside the PS5. And in an interview with somebody from Epic Games, they talked about how they actually had to redesign some aspects of the Unreal Engine 5 to take advantage of the PS5's not just faster SSD speed, but their core IO subsystems had to be rewritten in order to take advantage of all of the speed that's going on through the SSD. And while yes, the PS5 doesn't necessarily have an unprecedentedly fast SSD, they do have a very complex and rewritten IO system to make it so that it's not just the SSD that's super fast, but everything that's getting the information to and from the SSD also isn't bottlenecked as much as it would have been otherwise, or like we might see on the Xbox Series X. It was actually a huge part of Mark Cerny's PS5 keynote where he went into the technical analysis of it. It's not just the SSD speed, it's everything around the SSD is wicked fast and now we're seeing game engines having to be rewritten in order to work with it. Speed is coming fast for everybody 
And what's coming fast is maybe you have to get your uh, Corsair power supply recalled because they are issuing a voluntary recall for their SF power supplies that were produced between October 29th and March 2020. Apparently there is a problem located in the AC conversion of the power supply, not in the DC part. So they don't expect that it's gonna cause anybody's computer to explode or break any part that the power supply is connected to. It's simply the power supply would die and you can check out their website. They're paying for basically everything. So you can just get a uh, voluntary recall, product replacement, they'll get it all sorted for you we'll leave a link in the video description in case you need to get your sf power supply recalled i need to check mine because i bought mine in december so i need to see when it was produced and i don't know where the box is but i'll find it and see if i have to do this myself and what i'll have to do myself is probably what AMD is thinking, fine, I'll carry the entire CPU industry myself if you're not gonna help Intel because there's a new roadmap coming out from Intel. And while a lot of people were hyping and expecting that Rocket Lake would come out this year because I mean, Comet Lake is just kind of a meh launch. Like, yeah, great, what's next? Like you, you're releasing things that just, what? Anyways, Rocket Lake was expected to come out before the end of the year. However, according to a new roadmap out of Intel, we're done with launches from Intel for the mainstream this year when it comes to CPU. So no Rocket Lake, no Ice Lake X. You're just kind of stuck on the same old architecture. This could be because they haven't, they don't feel comfortable announcing Rocket Lake and they're still working on it. It might still come out this year. There's still that sliver of hope. However, when a roadmap doesn't show it, maybe it's not actually gonna be happening. So that's not happening. And then also there's a leak roadmap pointing that Tiger Lake Nooks and Elk Bay compute elements are landing later this year. That's going to be happening. So you can, uh, in case you're interested in Nook roadmaps, we've got that for you down below as well. And what we have for you down below is a benchmark battle become between upcoming Intel 11th Gen Tiger Lake and the current AMD Renoir APUs that are going into laptops, the Core i7 1165G7 versus the Ryzen 7 4800U. And what we find is that the CPU score of the Renoir is just absolutely smack dabbery, smashing faster, 55% faster than what we're getting on uh, what should be the one of the flagship Ice Lake chips. But, but the graphics on Project Z are better than AMD's Vega integrated graphics. So the highest end integrated graphics that AMD has to offer on mobile loses to Intel's next gen. So that's pretty impressive out of Project Z if these benchmark leaks are to be trusted. And there's also some more benchmark leaks of Rocket Lake, not anything too intriguing, has a 4.3 gigahertz base clock, eight cores, 16 threads. It's not, there's not more than what we've seen. It's just, it shows that Rocket Lake does exist. And what I guess it does exist is HP's new portable SSD, the P500, one terabytes, which is really weird because like it looks like a Samsung T5 more or less. It's a portable SSD, right? But it only has read speeds of 420 megabytes per second and only has write speeds of 255 megabytes per second, which after having the Samsung T5s, that's just appallingly slow. And the price that looks to be selling for is roughly about $100 for the one terabyte model, which isn't exactly cheap. So I'm not sure if you want that. And I'm not sure if you want this hand cranked handheld gaming system, but you might because it plays Doom. It's a 2.7 inch device called the Playdate, has a 400 by 200 monochromatic LCD, the hand crank, as I mentioned, 16 megs of RAM, two gigabytes of storage, USB Type-C, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and a headphone jack. It goes for $150 and it can play Doom. You just gotta hand crank that Doom. You can hand crank to fire the minigun. That's kind of cool. So there's that. And what's kind of cool is free games. I really like free games. And Epic Games has been giving away a lot of free games. And turns out that CEO of Epic Games, Tim Sweeney, has been saying that our free games lead to more sales of that game based on other platforms. Saying that because people are able to pick up free games from Epic Games, it kind of creates a FOMO for other people, or it gives certain people experiences into new genres that they wouldn't have otherwise tried out, and then they recommend it to their friends, and so they see upticks in sales on other platforms. Platforms. How much of that is true and how much of that is Epic Games blowing smoke up its own butt to seem important? Not quite sure, but the CEO of Epic Games saying that and the CEO of Slightly Mad Studios saying a lot of things about a console that never got released. The Mad Box, in case you don't remember that, which basically looks like a six-year-old was asked to design uh, a game console that would fit in the Batcave. Well, this has nothing to do with that. 
Uh, we're going to be talking about something else from Slightly Mad Studios, which is known as Project Cars. And there was a trailer dropped for Project Cars 3. And oh boy, did it rustle the jimmies of the sim racing community to some extent, because it turns out that they updated the physics engine. And in the trailer, you can see two cars touching, and then there's no visible damage on any of the cars which just could be because it's a pre-release trailer, they don't have all of the physics stuff done, or it could be because some people from the Slightly Mad Studios have been saying that they're trying to make this more generically appealing to the mass audience, and so they might be toning down some of the physics-based aspects of the sim racing community in order to make it more friendly to other people, basically turning it into a Gran Turismo or maybe even a need for speed where you can you know, spin 500,000 RPM and still come out fine when you tap a wall. It's fun. What should be fun is the new Studio Ghibli movie that's launching the end of this year in winter in Japan on TV. They're going to be releasing their first fully CG movie called Aya and the Witch. So this will be Studio Ghibli's first entry into making completely CG. They have done CG in the past and it accounts for about 10% of their films overall, but this is the first one that's going to be completely full of CG. And 2020 has been full of covering your face, whether it's due to coronavirus. Coronavirus! or you know, just uh, being out and about and all that kind of stuff. Well, the Signal app, which is used for secure end-to-end -end messaging, that is now adding a face blurring feature in order to help protect the identities of yourself or other people while you're filming them out and about. It uses AI that's locally processed on your device in order to do it. And in case you can't get all of the faces, well, you can manually do it yourself. But there you go, face blurring coming into Signal, keeping things even more secure than they otherwise would. And unfortunately, if you worked for Kitty Hawk's flyer program, your job might not be secure. They're laying off most of the 70 person team who is behind their original VTOL uh, flyer car flying car thing which looks a little weird they're instead going to be transitioning to work on their secondary one known as heavy side and yes the flyer dead heavy side heavy enough and what's also really heavy on the side is a rocket because they're just heavy all around and SpaceX had a record-setting attempt over the weekend where they launched 60 new Starlink satellites out of Florida using the Falcon 9 rocket, and it was the first Falcon 9 booster to land five attempts successfully. Apparently, they've had five takeoffs before, but they never landed the fifth takeoff, so this one actually did it properly. This is after they already launched the Crew Dragon in space and those astronauts got to the ISS. This Falcon 9 launched 60 Starlink satellites, which have the sunshades on them to help protect against the night, so they're it's a test the 60 satellites isn't a whole lot for like worldwide internet connectivity but it's supposed to be a test to make sure that they're not uh, interfering with astrophotography and what's going to be interfering with people's astro immunity not sure why it's astro but the people's immune systems all right you got coronavirus everywhere well ces has decided that regardless of that regardless of anything that's happening right now they're still going to have an in-person event next year that's going to be taking place in las vegas some of the tech tubers in the scene have said that they are not going to be attending mkbhd of note saying that it's not happening probably gonna to have to break his eight-year streak and saying that there's a reason there's a flu already named after ces you pack in 100,000 people plus from around the world. Everybody's touching the same stuff, shaking hands, industry loving, all of that stuff going on. Probably not the best place to not have something spread. And also Linus from LTT saying that he's not going this year and he's not sending any of his team unless they're vaccinated and they also want to attend. So there you go. And there we go is what's happening with a Google $5 billion lawsuit about them tracking you in incognito mode, despite the fact that they said that they weren't going to do it. There is a class action lawsuit going against them with the complaint currently seeking $5,000 per user for the violation of federal wiretapping, as well as California privacy laws saying that they tracked people and gave them ads afterwards for things that they were searching in incognito mode, despite the fact that uh, Google says when you launch incognito mode that they are not tracking or saving any of your data. And in case you're tracking, Kerbal Space Program 2 got delayed earlier, but in case you haven't been tracking, there's some major drama going down in this between Take Two and the studio developer that was behind making the first KSP and was on track to make the second one. Apparently they were in contract negotiations with Take Two, which then decided that, hey, no, we don't wanna do these contract negotiations. We're gonna start up our own studio since we own the rights to KSP. We actually don't need your studio to do it. So we're gonna spin up our own, but while we're doing that, we're gonna take everybody that's working for your team and move them over to ours 
and just not pay your studio. Why would we need to do that when we now have our own? And it turns out, at least according to somebody from Take Two, that half of the team from the original Star Theory is now on the uh, Intercept team that is part of making KSP2, which helps to explain some of the delays that have transpired with KSP2. But uh, this all coming out of a Bloomberg report from Jason Trier saying that the uh, merger between Take Two and KSP hasn't been without some controversy. So that's that's the thing that's happening. And the thing that's happening now is the end of hot news. Don't forget, Fan Mail Friday, in case you want to have us open your stuff, send us your stuff over on our P.O. Box, P.O. Box 5697, Gainesville, Florida, 32627. Glad to see some of you guys already sent in stuff. We're going to be opening it on our live stream, which we do every single weekday, twitch.tv forward slash UF to Skipple. See you there. And I'll see you not this weekend because I'm done. Although we have videos this weekend, but you know, I just I we already did them, and I don't have to watch those. Okay, bye.